All right, guys, this is going to be a quick rose propagation video, but I've got to answer this question. Mike, why do my rose cuttings keep turning black and rotting? So people tell me I did everything you said, Mike, and they're talking about that video I did. I'll put a link in the description down below. They copied it to a T, and they're still getting black rotting rose stems. Well, I've got the solution for you right now. This is a foolproof method that anybody can be successful at, and you will see no more black rotting stems. Let's go. So I took my rose cutting. This is what it looks like. It's a softwood, start to verge into semi-hardwood cutting. Today is July 2nd, but the telltale sign that it's ready to take the cutting is the bloom has just finished fading. It's gone now. The wood is semi-rigid here. It's not gonna wilt over and die. It can hold up on its own after being severed from the parent plant. So the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the top right off of this because we don't need all this softer material up top. We'll go about an inch, three quarters of an inch above that last node there, gone. Now these are gonna be the leaves that I leave intact. So we're gonna strip the rest of these guys all the way down here. Now I'm gonna take these little thorns off. I just like to break them off with my fingers. It just opens up area to accept the rooting hormone and create little wounds on the plant that roots can possibly grow out of, although most of the time they come down below here at the bo bottom, the base of the cutting. We're still gonna strip all these guys off. Another advantage of this is I won't get poked so much after it roots. All right, so you want a nice tall cutting like that. If you'll notice, that's about a foot long, maybe 10 inches, 12 inches long, something like that. But I've got two sets of leaves. I'm gonna snip the end of those leaves off. We're just gonna make it a little bit smaller. It loses less moisture through the leaves that way, saves room in the propagation, little cup area that we're gonna have this. And now, I like to cut right below a node, so you'll see there was a node right there where a little leaf branch came out of. I'm gonna cut right below that, and I'll cut it in an angle just to give it more surface to grow roots out of. Now I immediately wanna dip this in my rooting hormone, which I'm using Hormidin 3 right now, but you want it to be dipped in that hormone while that base is still moist, so it can accept and soak up a little bit of that hormone. Shake off the excess, and that's what you get right there. So here's the first secret and reason that this is gonna be foolproof. The reason your stems are turning black is because there's fungus getting in these guys. So roses are susceptible to fungal diseases, and that's why you're seeing them turn black, but we're gonna fight that right now I've got an old bottle of Dakinil, and I don't, uh, I'm not a spokesman for the brand, but that's what I buy for uh, fungicide if I need it. And we're gonna spray it right on the end of this cutting and just kinda whoop, hose it down a little bit. We'll turn on the spray part. <laughs> okay, so there is no spray button. So we're gonna be real careful and just drip this or spray it all along the cutting there. And just kinda saturate it in this stuff. All right, nice fungicide all over the stem. Will not hurt that cutting at all. It'll just protect it. Now the next secret ingredient is sand. It drains really well, really quickly, so it doesn't hold too much water like some of you are experiencing, which can contribute to rot. It does hold some moisture. You can see there's moisture around all that sand, but it's also got plenty of air flowing between it, even though it's small and you can't see it. And finally, it's inert. It doesn't have a bunch of bacteria and fungus in it. It's not gonna grow a bunch of bacteria and fungus. It's an inhospitable environment for that. So, pretty quickly, we wanna take our little rose cutting after we've got it all trimmed up, and we've dipped it in rooting hormone, and we've sprayed it with the fungicide. And by the way, I did spray the top of that sand with the fungicide a pretty good amount, and then rinsed it in a little bit first too. Then, I'm just gonna, and I know you guys are gonna say, use a dibbler, Mike, but I'm just gonna stick it right in there and that's it. The last thing I'm gonna do is take that same bottle of Dakin Hill and we're just gonna spray all over the top of that sand and around that cutting and we're gonna kill any fungus that might be getting in there. And finally we're just gonna run some water over that and let all that rinse down in there real good and there's our little cutting. Look at that sand. See how that's draining? Draining really quickly but it will leave behind plenty of moisture and aeration throughout that sand for this little cutting. Now, we've got that uh, antifungal all throughout this whole little one gallon pot here, and then we had put it all over the cutting, so hopefully 
it's done its job, it's done whatever it needs to do, and we still got some residual throughout there, and we're not gonna have any single problems with black stems. I so wanna see this work for you guys that I'm pulling out all the stops with this one, and I have no doubt that this is gonna work for you. In fact, I'm so convinced that this is the answer to your problems on getting these roses to root successfully, that we're only gonna stick this one cutting. I know, I know that this little cutting wants to root. I know. It's gonna do just beautiful and grow massive amounts of roots in this little container and grow on to be a beautiful, healthy rose. You just gotta believe it, guys. All right, so the last and final thing we're gonna do here is take this little plastic container. You guys remember that? I'm getting nostalgic again. And we're gonna put it right over top of this cutting around those leaves. And we're just gonna set it right into the sand and then I'll push down a little bit maybe a half inch or so. And there the cutting resides. Just beautiful in its little container. And when the last rose petal falls, I'll turn into a beast forever. All right, so here we are again. I placed this on the north side of my pole barn. You can use the north side of any building or any wall so that the sun, the direct sun, never hits this bottle, but it gets plenty of overhead skylight. And that's all there is to it, guys. We're gonna leave this here. Like I said, it's July 2nd. We're gonna leave this here for, I don't know, it's probably gonna take six weeks or so to root. Maybe sooner, we'll see what happens. But I'm convinced this is the answer to your problem. And this is the way to go for you guys. I'm constantly trying new things. I'm gonna make this work for you. We're gonna see what happens. Oh yeah, and one more thing, you saw me take the bottle cap off last time, that's because I had it in the hoop house where more light could get to it, so it was heating up in here and I wanted to vent that heat. Well this time, the weather this year has been extremely just variant, it's been fluctuating like crazy. I don't know what's gonna happen, so I'm leaving it on right now loosely and hopefully it's venting a little bit of heat, but it's not getting any direct sun, so it shouldn't build up any heat in there. I just wanna protect it that much more this year until we get more stable temperatures. All right, here we go, July 2nd. We'll come back when something's happened. All right, so today is August 17th, and I am very excited to bring this little reveal to you guys. Now, I want you to take notice of something. This little cap here that went onto the top of the container sat on top of that container through the last six weeks. It's been six weeks since we started this guy. And it sat on there the whole time until about maybe five days ago. It was just getting hot, it's August. So I took the cap off and set it down here. It's been off ever since and you see all the humidity that remains inside of there. And because I am gonna get this question right here, I'm gonna tell you, I have been watering this about every other day when I water all my other landscape plants, sometimes every third day, but not inside the bottle right here. I just go around the outside with the hose and the water just sinks through and keeps everything moist. I never watered inside of the bottle. I don't know if that would matter or not, but I watered on the outside and it kept everything moist. So I am very excited about this one, guys, and I am gonna find out with you exactly what we've got in here. I have not taken this off yet. I haven't dug into here. I haven't seen any roots. I don't know what's going on in there, but it's been six weeks. I don't see any black, any fungus, anything like that. And I have a feeling we got this guy to root. Let's check it out. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just take this guy right off of here. Get the cap out of there. And I don't wanna tear these roots up, so, we're gonna tilt this sideways and just kind of let it fall out of here. And it started. <laughs> there's not a lot of them, but there's some. There it is. Pretty dang cool. And as I'm looking down in the fabric, I'm noticing some of these roots got ripped off. They were growing into the fabric there. So, you see that? So this guy is actually, it was just starting to take off, man. I need to leave this in there a little longer. You know what? We're not ready yet, guys. I'm putting this back. So now we know we've got roots. We know that this thing, you saw that little bit of white callus, right? It's busting out at the seams. This thing was a week away from blowing up. It's a little set back now, but we're going to come back here in a couple more weeks. We can do better than this, guys. This thing's going to blow some serious roots out of this guy. So lid goes back on. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back.
All right, guys, today is September 4th, and we've got to finish this one up because those leaves are starting to turn a little bit yellow. We're headed into cooler weather, and I don't want to lose this one. I shouldn't have pulled that up so soon, but I was trying to show you the roots, but let's go get that rose cutting right now. It's been several more weeks since that last little shot. Let's see if it did shoot out some roots there for you. We'll take a look at them. We'll see if this one's going to make it through the year after me tearing it out of there so many times, but uh, let's take a look at it right now. So there's our little rose cutting right there, and after that last little clip, I just brought it into the hoop house. I took the bottle off the top of it and just let it sit here. I've watered it with the rest of my plants in the hoop house whenever I water, so usually about every second day or something like that. But let's go ahead and pull this out now. We're going to do it gently and see if we've got some roots down in there. All right, I am so excited about this one because I've worked hard to try and get this to you so that you guys will be successful with roses. Now, I see a little bud just starting to shoot up. Hopefully you can see that there. Just a little bud right at the tip there. But let's go ahead and let's see if this last few weeks has been enough time to get some roots going here. And it wasn't. Look at that, guys. There's still just one little scraggly root there. All right, that's it. I've had enough of this. We're going to do something about it. All right, it's the fourth quarter. This is a last-ditch effort, so... I got this guy repotted back up. It's got yellowing leaves. We're in the beginning of September. We're headed into fall. There's not much hope left. We're going to pull out every stop to make this happen because I'm excited about this project, and I want to prove to you guys that we can take one cutting and we can make this rose root no matter what. So we're gonna make this happen. We've got our bottom heat hooked up now. I've got some warmth going on here. I'm gonna put that pot right on top of this. We've got another month, month and a half of warmer weather. It's not gonna, it's gonna get cooler, but we're gonna put it on here. We've still got some sunlight going on. Everything's kind of calming down for the fall, but we're gonna make this happen. So there's one last thing we're gonna do here. I don't recommend this normally, but we know that we've killed any fungus in this pot, and this rose has the potential to root. I'm just gonna fertilize it a little bit because you see those yellowing leaves this thing's been sitting here for a long time now trying to root using up a lot of energy it's pulling energy from the leaves and this stem may not have much left so we're going to fertilize it we're going to water it i'm going to water this every time i water the hoop house so every other day every third or fourth day as it starts cooling down and it's going to put some nutrients into this sand and when those roots first start going because of the bottom heat they'll be able to get some nutrients they'll be able to start some growth and get some nutrition back into this stem maybe that little bud will start growing a little bit before fall but i don't know if we're going to save this one the whole point is to get roots for you guys and prove that we can do this with one cutting successfully without fungal attack all right today is october 2nd and i'm excited to show you guys something now we're gonna go take a look at this rose. It's been a month since we last did that little clip. It's been on bottom heat ever since, and I have not tried to pull it up. I have not dug down. I have not done anything with this. So, just like the previous little checks, I don't know what we're gonna find, but I will tell you that I am a major proponent of bottom heat in the right times, in the right setting, with the right plants, and I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that we got roots in that pot. I'd, I'd be willing to bet my next paycheck. I hope to God this has roots. There it is, sitting on the bottom. He's been sitting here for a month now. If you remember, I fertilized right there. I've just been watering when I water the rest of my plants in my hoop house here. And so it probably gets watered every three days or so. It's getting cooler, so I'm not watering as frequently. But look at this new growth. This is warm down in here. I'd say this is probably in the 80s down here inside that sand. And this is probably up into the 70s and maybe even 60s up here on top, but uh, plenty of warmth. Now, the air temperature outside is getting cooler now, so this is only gonna last for so long. I'm either gonna have to, get, I'm gonna have to get it off the pot so it can start cooling down and go dormant with the winter and just leave it out here, or bring it inside and let it stay warm and continue to grow. I don't know, we might do that. We'll see what happens, but look at that. I told you before, I was hoping to get some of these little buds to shoot off, and look at that, they're shooting off. The leaves fell off because they were starting to turn yellow. It was getting cold, but now that we've warmed it back up for a month, it's really starting to put on some nice, neat little growth. I love that. I'm almost kind of afraid to pull this up because it's doing so well now, but I gotta show you guys the roots. We gotta prove that this has been working. So I've decided I'm gonna throw a caution to the wind. 
we're just going to dig down and find the roots because that's what we intended to do with this guy. And I wanted to show you way back when this thing started how we can propagate one rose cutting with 100% success rate and not have to worry about black fungal issues. So let's start digging. And I'm going to try and be gentle. Ain't going to be perfect, but let's see if we can get down in there, way down in there. Pull this up. There we go. Look at that. We got not a lot of them, but we've got some roots. We finally got some roots, guys. So there it is. One beautiful, healthy, viable little rooted cutting of a rose. Now, I know that's not a massive amount of roots there. I mean, anybody can take a look at that and see that we've done a lot better in the past, but I think a big part of the problem is I have ripped this thing out three different times now to look at it, and we've just messed with it so much that it's getting set back every single time. But the theory, the practice works. If you guys are struggling, this goes back to why we started this whole video. If you guys are struggling with rooting your roses and you keep coming to me and you say, I've got black all up and down the stems, well, it's more than likely a fungal disease because these things are susceptible to fungal diseases. And if you just put it in sand and you spray with that antifungal, look at, this is it. I mean, it, it would continue to grow. If I'd leave it in this pot, put it inside a house, or if I would have left it originally a month and a half ago when we first ripped it out and just left it alone, it would have just kept rooting beautifully. It's putting on new growth. There it is, 100%, guys. We stuck one cutting. I knew we were going to get this thing to root, but there's the power of bottom heat. We're going into fall. It's getting cooler and cooler, and we've still got root growth. We've got top growth. It's helping this little guy along. So I think I'm going to plant this out or not plant it out, that you wouldn't want to plant this outside right now because it wouldn't make it, but it's just too young and not robust enough yet. But I'm going to plant this into a little pot, and I think I might just bring it inside the house and see what we get with it. I, I really want to see if we can make this make it. Now, I've ripped the roots out one more time, a third time here, and I've probably stunted it again. But I'm going to pot it up, get it into a warm environment, get it under some lights that are increasing in the amount throughout the day and not decreasing telling this thing that it's going to be winter soon and we'll see if we can get it going i'll put it in a clear cup too so you guys can see the roots we can see if they get out to the edge and start growing real well see if the new growth comes on more and so there you have it we did it again we pulled this one out by the skin of our teeth but we pulled it out nonetheless so i've got it potted up you guys will be able to see the roots when this thing starts rooting out if it starts rooting out i think it will i love you little buddy please root for us so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you learned something from this video and all of you people who have been struggling with rose propagation i hope you use this method and do the little steps that we did in this one because as you can see, it really worked, and it worked well, and we didn't struggle with any of that black fungal issue that you guys are having with your rose cuttings. So if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to follow along and see how this little guy turns out. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.